Chris Phil. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, clearly, when we grant the government powers to uh, infringe on our privacy, um, such powers must be deemed absolutely necessary. And I believe no case better shines a light on what may be considered necessary than a case that came into my constituency surgery um, some short time ago. Um, Barry Bedner's 14-year-old uh, son was groomed online over a course of some months. He was lured to uh, a flat of someone called Lewis Danes, where he was brutally murdered. And speaking to Barry Bedner and the boy's mother, Lauren Lefebvre, um, it is very clear that powers such as these are absolutely necessary to protect young people like Breck from being groomed online to help the authorities uh, investigate the offences and indeed prevent further such offences taking place. And Mr Speaker, we always face a choice in these matters uh, and I choose to stand with victims like Breck. I choose to stand with Breck's mother and father in doing everything we can to prevent and to investigate and to catch the perpetrators of crimes like these. And if the price I have to pay for that is that my internet browsing history gets stored or if the authorities have certain powers to intercept my communications, that is a price I am very happy to pay in order to protect young men and women like Breck Bedner. And that is why I will be supporting the Government's um, second reading this evening. And I would like to thank the Home Secretary um, for taking time to meet about two weeks ago with Barry Bedner and Lauren Lefebvre. They were very grateful for the time the Home Secretary took to listen to their concerns. And I would like to put on record uh, my thanks to the Home Secretary um, for doing that. Um, since the Shadow Home Secretary um, is now in his place, um, I would like to take the opportunity to briefly respond um, to a point that the Right Honourable Member for Lee raised. Uh, he made great um, play in his speech about this uh, question about economic well-being, which concerned um, the right member. He mentioned an example from 1972, and the fact he's got to go back as far as 1972 to find the example um, it says something. But I would, I would um, draw the right member's attention um, to Clause 18.4, which I think addresses his concern, and it specifically says that the test of economic well-being can only be applied to interception requests that are not in the United Kingdom. So the concerns that the right member gentleman was raising about uh, the conduct of trade unions and so on um, would not apply because it only relates to matters outside the United Kingdom. I hope that that gives the right honourable member the reassurance um, that he requires. Uh, Mr Speaker, I do believe this bill is proportionate. It is reasonable. I am comforted by the judicial oversight in place and I will most certainly be supporting it in the division lobby this evening. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.